So please we'll just continue. We were uh, so we'll be discussing with two terms here that is menarche and menopause. So menstrual cycle usually occur once in every month and it starts when the first menses and I call that uh, and ends till the last menses and that first menstruation that occurs at the attaining of puberty I can call it as menarche and the last menses where there is a cessation of menstruation which marks the end of the reproductive cycle life in a human female or in a female we call it as menopause. And during menopause, what all happen? There is a atrophy of ovaries. Ovary gradually atrophies. There is a atrophy that is degeneration of fallopian tube, uterus, vagina, the external genitalia and the breast. And the changes leading to menopause begins between the age of 40 to 50. And during this period, the ovary fails to respond to the uh, hormones like FSH and LH from the hypothalamus and we'll just see the uh, uterus cycle the structures we can see that the menstrual phase when there is bleeding and the endometrial wall gradually decreases because there is a flow it has been plot off that is the stratum functionalis has been lost and next then after the fifth day that is from the sixth day till the fourteenth day there is the uh, uh, division of the endometrial cells and now it increases in size from 6 to 5, 5 to 6 folds. And this phase I call it as, since there is an active mitosis taking place, I can call it as proliferatory phase or pre-ovulatory phase. And after ovulation, the uterus is always in a stigma that it will release not stigma actually it, it is in a uh, belief that uh, there will be a implantation so further uh, changes take place in the endometrium it becomes more thickened there is more vascularization taking place there there is more storage of glycogen food reserves which makes the endometrium perfect wet soft wet thick a nutritious bed for the uh, for the arrival of the baby fetus and it also becomes this endometrial layer now have uh, become glandular in nature it have the uh, capacity to secrete too and now this phase i can call it as the post ovulatory phase or i can also call it a secretory phase or preparatory phase so this is the complete uh, uh, structure of the menstrual cycle in a nutshell format. I could see the FSH and the LH released from the anterior pituitary. The FSH, what happened is that that gives the information that comes and acts on the ovary, and it gives the information to the follicles to develop. So in response to the FSH the primordial germ cells will develop into primary follicles and in, re in response to FSH, FSH is continuously released during the follicular phase and during that in response to that this primary follicles will form the secondary follicles and then forms the graphene follicles and once it uh, forms the secondary and the graphene in response to FSH they also have the secretory function they start releasing the female hormone estrogen which is uh, uh, having its own function on the uterus and we can see that uh, during the 14th near to the 14th day when there is ovulatory phase taking place in the ovary the another hormone from the uh, anterior pituitary is released in high quantity that is LH and that LH is response acting on the secondary follicle and the graphene follicle for further development and the release and the main function is that the ovulation it leads to the release of the ova and this LH goes on having its function in uh, uh, even after ovulation for some time for the formation for the preparation or the for the setting up of corpus luteum and it have its own action on corpus luteum now in response to that 
the uh, corpus luteum start releasing the uh, in uh, the hormones the progesterone and the estrogen and most significantly progesterone and this uh, progesterone will act on the secretory phase on the ut uh, the uterine wall estrogen so what we could see is that if i go parallelly after menstruation uh, till uh, after the fifth day after the sixth day when there is a proliferatory phase the same time uh, coincide in the case of the ovarian cycle and in during that time there will be release of estrogen after the fifth day so that estrogen comes and act on the uterine wall which is a signal to its development for its um, multiplic mitotic division and increase in the size now the size of the endometrium goes on increasing and after 14th day we can see that after 14th day when the ovum is released parallelly we can see that corpus there is changes taking place in the uterus that is after 14 day when corpus luteum and all that is formed it start releasing progesterone along with estrogen and that progesterone and estrogen come and act on the endometrial wall making it more prepared for the uh, arrival of the fetus and it makes it more secretory too so now the endometrial wall becomes more thickened more vascularized and also have glycogen stores for the implantation and well ready for the implantation and we can see that gradually if there is no pregnancy the corpus luteum will be start degenerating into white fibrous tissue i call it as the corpus luteum and parallelly since there is no pregnancy there is no need of endometrium so it has been slot off because as corpus luteum is withdrawn it is degenerated there is stop in the release of progesterone and estrogen and this progesterone is very essential for retaining the size of the endometrial wall to retain the that calm condition in the uterus but as and when that estrogen and progesterone is been withdrawn with the degeneration of corpus luteum as it becomes corpus albicans the further this endometrium is cannot be Uh, retained in the uterus it is been slot off and it is flow as menstruation after the 28th day cycle again another cycle starts so this is a natural view of the reproductive cycle in female and it's controlled by hormones